So, hello everyone. My name is Patrick Granholm. I'm from Uppsala University Library. And I'm here to present our uh, digital catalogue of Greek manuscripts. <coughs> Let me first say I'm very happy to be here and present in front of this crowd, but I'm also a bit intimidated. Since I'm not a developer myself, my background is in classics. So, uh, my presentation will be probably the least technical at this conference, and it's on the far end of the user scale, so to speak. But uh, hopefully it will be of some interest, at least, to this crowd. Uh, before we get started, I will just take a few minutes to present our uh, pro pro project and, and what it is we are doing. So, uh, basically we are uh, cataloging and digitizing all the Greek manuscripts in Sweden, in Swedish libraries. And uh, this is a project uh, which uh, employs two, two researchers, myself and a colleague in Uppsala. And we have been working since 2012 and uh, we are expecting to be finished in early 2016. Or uh, rather our funding will finish then and we'll hopefully we'll get more funding and, and the project will live on for a few months or years longer. Uh, in total there are 121 manuscripts in Sweden and uh, they range from the 11th century to the 18th century. Uh, basically we cover everything written in the Greek script. They're not all from the Greek speaking area but also from uh, other parts of Europe. Humanists were written in Greek. Uh, and uh, the goal is to, to create a digital catalog encoded in TEI using the manuscript description module in, in TEI together with uh, high resolution images of all pages. Uh, for the digitization process we, we, uh, we photograph all manuscripts, uh, roughly 36,000 pages and uh, this will result in uh, quite a high number of high resolution images with our 60 megapixel camera. The, the images, the raw images are stored in a TIFF format, uh, roughly 150 megabytes per image and uh, this is too large for, for the web so we will convert them to JPEG 2000 for the web display. Uh, the JPEG 2000 is a very good format because it comp compresses the, the image without too much uh, uh, reduction in, in the quality, image quality. Uh, the JPEG 2000 also has the advantage that you can save it in a so-called so tiled image pyramid format where you save it in multiple layers and each layer consists of uh, tiles. Uh, 256 times 256 pixel tiles, which makes the display quite fast on the web. I will show it briefly how, how it works. Uh, as I said, the digital catalog will be encoded in, uh, in TI uh, MS description module. Uh, and probably most people here know what TI is. It's the text encoding initiative uh, for encoding uh, text basically, but you can use it also to, to, uh, for the metadata to describe the text bearing object and, and that's what we're using for our, for our catalog. Uh, the MS description module is very, it's, it's very suitable for a detailed scientific manuscript catalog because it, it's been developed together with uh, manuscript catalogers, so it follows the traditional uh, layout and method you find in, in the printed manuscript catalogs uh, where you sort of describe in great detail the contents of the manuscript and, and also the physical description, uh, the, the, the materials used, uh, the binding and, and the watermarks, uh, ruling patterns uh, and so on. And uh, then for the interesting part, uh, the implementation uh, so we're using XSDB for uh, the search and uh, search interface and, and uh, also for the transforming of the, the TI files into XHTML. Uh, for the images we have an IIP image server uh, and the Diva 
JS image viewer. And it's all behind a, an Apache reverse proxy. So let's take a look at the catalog. Hopefully it will work. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it's really a, a beta version at the moment. You'll have to excuse all bugs that will occur during this demonstration. Uh, basically, it just uses the uh, oh, there's my colleague updating one of our files at the moment. Uh, it's using the, the basic bootstrap theme, uh, which comes with exist. And uh, at the moment, there is a very s simple functionality. We have a few items you can browse. You can browse all the I manuscripts. At the moment, there are only seven manuscripts in the collection, which will hopefully grow to 121 eventually. And uh, this just pulls some basic. This, these things are usually what scholars look for when they want to get a fast view of, of the collection, uh, the, the date and the, the support, a short summary of the contents. Uh, you can also list all the texts found in, in the collection by author or work. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of texts just in seven manuscripts. This will multiply by 15 at least when we're done. So, And some of them are anonymous on the titles can be shown. Uh, we also have a, a list of Inkipit, which is the sort of the starting, in case the text is, is unknown or unpublished or relatively unknown, you usually quote the first words of, of each text so, so scholars can find similar text. And the reason we are list, listing this is because uh, most of our users will be coming from the traditional printed catalog where you can browse through these very detailed indices at the back of the, of the printed catalog. So sometimes it's, it's uh, useful to be able to just browse through an index instead of specifically searching for, for, for something. Uh, especially in the case of incipits, it's, it's, uh, you can sometimes, they can vary the wording, the phrasing, the, the order of the, the words can, can vary and then it can be useful to just browse through a list like this. <coughs> uh, well, as I said, the search interface is, is still very basic. Uh, you can uh, open up that search for uh, titles, and you will get a hit of, of the titles of works found in the collection. Uh, I had hoped to, this is actually one of the few examples where the search highlighting works. Uh, I had hoped to, to be able to, to make it work when you click on the manuscript also when you get the sort of the full. So this is how the, the how the catalog looks basically. You have the, the detailed description on the left with the image viewer on the right, so, so you have them in parallel. Uh, we found that this was something we, we, we really wanted to implement because it's extremely useful when you're looking through the catalog to have the images in parallel. And you can uh, jump to a specific uh, folio and the, the viewer will load that page. And this image viewer is really very useful because you can scroll Usually in image viewers, you have to sort of click on a button to, to jump to the next page. But here you can just scroll through the, the whole manuscript. And uh, you can zoom in. You can also get it in full screen. So one more zoom level. And. Uh, Yeah, well, basically, as you can see, it's, it's a really, the, the level, the biggest problem is the, the, the 
the TI structure and, and getting, I mean, it's usually easy to, to query and, and uh, display a, a prose text where you can have a few, few elements you want to, to query, but we have quite a lot of maybe 50, 60 elements we want to put in our index, and that's one of our bigger, bigger problems, how, how, to, how to solve that, and also how to, well, make this uh, search highlighting work to, to put our quite complicated style sheets Run, run that through, through the search highlighting uh, function was, was something I didn't get to work. But, uh, uh, some future uh, plans for, for our interface is, well, basically the search highlighting, of course, and uh, maybe also include a faceted search, so you could uh, narrow down your, your search hits. Uh, I would also probably want to make the, the catalog part collapsible, so you can sort of remove it and have the images in full screen without having to jump between this uh, full screen mode all the time. Uh, yeah, basically, that's it. Uh, I, uh, I'm very happy to, to have a piece of software like exist because it's uh, for uh, even for a noob like me, it's been fairly easy to get something workable, at least, presentable. And uh, of course, there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, we're on our way. So thank you very much. Sounds nice. Uh, any questions for Patrick? Adam? Uh, JPEG 2000 stuff. Are you using the lossy or the lossless profile? Uh, it's the lossy profile now, because uh, we're a bit sort of Cramped for space on our server, so I have to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, but we have we are. This is the, the image part is still a bit sort of unresolved. It, we might uh, use the, the library's image server eventually and, and stream straight from that, and they use lossless well, loss, lossless TIFF. So so yeah. so so it's yeah, but it's yeah. I'm aware of the issue with the. But I mean, it's it's still a very good quality regardless. I mean, now that the files are, I think between two or three megabytes per, per image here, instead of... Well, these are actually taken with our older camera, which was only 20 megapixels, so they're a bit smaller, but still, still quite... Is the JPEG 2000 supported by most major browsers these days? Uh, well, these are, they're actually tr transformed into JPEG by the image server, so the, this is not JPEG 2000 you're seeing. Ah. The tiles are just regular JPEG, so... Okay. So that's, it solves quite a lot of, and I mean, they're sort of, you can see if we're, they're, yeah, you can only also see them, and they're sort of loaded as you sort of scroll down, so. So it doesn't strain the, the well. It's very fast. Yeah. yeah, it's very fast, yeah. That's, that's the advantage with it, too. So. Do you also have transcriptions of text? Well, no, not at the moment, but it's, I mean, it's certainly possible. Well, actually, we have a one, one manuscript. We have a short, just a short uh, snippet of text. So, so yeah. I mean, if, if it's a completely unknown, unpublished text, we might include it. Because it's, I mean, it's very simple to, to include it in the same XML file. So, very the TI file. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. OK, thank you, Patrick. Thank you. So uh, just to remind you that